The devil can't see us succeed. And so he tells Allah, give me time and I'll prove my case. But then he, what he said, I re, it's, it, it, it's so loaded that it's not going to be done in one khutbah. His strategy that he, it's not even a secret. He didn't even hide what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. He actually laid it all out. And Allah laid it all out for us because part of guidance, part of knowing the road is knowing the dangers on the road. So know your enemy, right? So you can't just, Allah didn't just give us directions. Here's how you get to heaven. Well, here are all the obstacles on your way to heaven. Here's how, all the obstacles that will keep you from succeeding. And here's your enemy waiting for you. So he says to Allah, قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي And it is only because you made me turn the wrong way. This is what he says to Allah. It is only because you made me turn the wrong way. Who does he blame? Allah. This was your scheme. This was your plan. You knew it would bother me that Adam is made from dirt and you messed, because you're all knowing, you messed with me anyway and you made me sin. It's your fault, not my fault. You got me into this. You did this to me. You just don't like me. You have it out against me. You're the one who cursed me. You're the one who doesn't want me to be forgiven. And because you did this to me, I'm going to do this to these human beings that you love so much. So the first part of that is blaming Allah. And because his first, in his response, you know, you could see, first he refused to do sajda. That was a distance away from Allah. Then he took another step and he said, well, I'm better. He, another distance, a step away from Allah. That's an act of arrogance. But now he's taken a huge step away from Allah. When he says, no, not only am I not wrong, you're the one who's wrong. You're the one who did wrong to me. Now he's blaming Allah. He's taking even another step. Guess what he's going to do with humanity? He's going to come to each one of us, and first he's going to make us disobey Allah. Just, okay, and then we all disobey Allah at some point. We all, we're not perfect, we're going to make mistakes. But that's one thing. But then he's get, And then maybe one time you make a mistake, you feel bad, you ask Allah to forgive, you repent, you cry, you, guilt, you feel guilt inside you. That just makes you human and that makes you like Adam alayhi salam. But he comes and makes you sin again and makes you, or convinces you to sin again, convinces you to sin again. And the next time he adds another worse step that takes you, a, it's way worse than the sin. If sin is bad, but something way worse is when you start justifying it. It's way worse when you start giving a logical explanation for why you sinned. Well, I was under a lot of pressure or I did this or I, I had this reason or that reason. You don't understand what I was going through. I was really upset at the time. You know, I have my reasons. When you start doing that, you're being like the devil. He's taking another step away. Taba'ada, shatana. Another step away from Allah. But the worst of it all is someone keeps going down a road of sin. And then when you say, why are you going down this road? You say, Allah wants it this way. You know, if Allah wanted, I would have been a better person. I don't, I don't even know why He hates me so much. God just doesn't like me. What has He done for me? And you find people that have now drowned themselves in sin... Now speaking about Allah in that way, exactly the step-by-step -step procedure shaitan took to take another step, another step, another step, before he's an infinite number of miles away from Allah. This is taba'ada. And all of this out of his rage. Fueled by the fuel of his, this vehicle is his rage. So he will want that for humanity. And so he says now to Allah, you're the reason. You're the cause. And you know what? Not only do I want to get away from this from my, my road to Allah, but he says, La ala siratika mustaqim He he says to the, he promises to Allah, siratika al mustaqim I promise to you and I swear to you and I swear to you and I swear to you. This is called Lam uh, Lam al Tawkid and Nun Thaqila in grammar. What that means is it's really hard to translate in English. An easy English translation would be I will sit waiting for them. That would be an easy English transition. But qu'ud actually means to sit somewhere waiting in ambush for an enemy. Qu'ud in a maq'ad in Arabic is where you sit waiting to ambush your enemy. You know how like cops sometimes pull in behind the bushes on the highway waiting for you to speed? That's qu'ud. That's actually qu'ud. Okay? Waq'udu lahum kulla maq'ad, Quran says. Kulla marsad actually. A place of ambush. But anyway, the idea of qu'ud is to sit somewhere a long time. And qu'ud is different from julus. If I sat on this chair and got up, that's julus. But if I was in qu'ud, I would take my time. So he's got all the time in the world. If you're not messing up, he's okay. He's like, oh, I'll get you eventually. 
I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. He's studying you. He and his minions are constantly watching you, surveying you from places you can't imagine. They're studying your behavior. They're looking at how you respond to things. They look at what upsets you, what makes you happy, what makes you slip. And then they use that against you. You're literally the psychological subjects of these devils. And so he promises Allah the strangest promise. He says, I will sit, I will wait for them. I will wait there for them. I swear to you, I will wait, I will wait, and I will wait. Where? On your path that is straight. On your straight path. Sometimes people ask the question, I understand when disbelievers mess up. I understand when people who don't believe in God are drinking and clubbing and adultery and all this other stuff. I get it. But I don't understand why people that look religious, act religious, talk religious, they know Qur'an, they've memorized, they're wearing hijabs, they just came from Hajj. And look at what they're doing. Look at how they're talking. Look at how they're behaving. These are supposed to be good people and look at how they're messing up. Guess who he comes after more than anyone else? He actually, he, he's bothered by people that are on this path. And he waits to attack you. And when he fails, he moves down one mile and says, okay, when you pass this mile marker, maybe I'll get you then. And when you, when you make him fail again, he moves ahead and waits for you again. And you keep going down this path and he will come at you and come at you and come at you. You know, people that are, haven't changed for Allah, people that are still in sin, they look at someone who's trying to change and say, you're a good person. You know, Allah made it easy for you. Allah didn't make it easy for anyone. The devil comes to everyone. It doesn't matter if you're praying five times a day. It doesn't matter if you're in tahajjud every single night. It doesn't matter if you do hajj every single year. It doesn't matter if you recited the entire Qur'an and you recited it over and over and over again. That will never make you immune from the devil waiting for you and coming at you and coming at you and coming at you. And he doesn't attack people the same way. You know, when you study your enemy, you know, in sports, for example, when, what they do with, with, with teams, right? Before they have a match with a team, they study the strategy for that team. And the coach tells them, this is how we're going to do our offense. This is how we're going to do our defense against this team. They study their opponent very, very well. So the, the, the gameplay of a team is not the same depending on the opponent. Even in one-on-one -on -one sports like tennis and things like that, you get coached. This is how you handle this opponent. This is how you handle their serve. This is how you respond. This is exactly what the devil does. His attack is not the same for me as it is for you. He's not going to attack you the same way he attacks me. He will study you. Find out your weaknesses and come at you from your weaknesses. He'll study me. Find out my weaknesses. Come at me from my weaknesses. And he knows that he, Allah has given him that time where he can just allow to, allow to be, sit back and just watch and study and observe and then come and suggest and then come and give whispers. And that too, all of it on Allah's straight path. So you know what we're learning? That the hardest thing to do is to actually take one step towards Allah. So the hardest thing to do. Not, not make a million miles of progress. One step towards Allah. Because when you're about to take that one step, He goes, wait, 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 wait. You are my friend. Because when you're going in the other direction, you're the devil's friend. But if you turn towards Allah, you just became His enemy. You're the reason He got kicked out. He wants to prove that everybody can be His friend in hell. So when you turn around even a little bit, and you take even one step, the devil will come at you in every single possible way he can to dissuade you from turning back. I've even met people that say, everything is going smooth in my life until I start praying. When I start praying, problems start happening. All of a sudden my friends are mad at me. All of a sudden my health is going bad. All of a sudden I'm having this trouble or that trouble or the other trouble. So I'm just scared of praying because things just start messing up. I knew a scholar one time who, uh, his mother was Christian and she was thinking, I mean, he, was, he kept inviting her to Islam and he's old himself and his mother's very old and he keeps inviting her to Islam, inviting her to Islam, inviting her to Islam and she's not, you know, she's not re ready to leave. And one time she decides that she's thinking about Islam and she starts getting nightmares every night. There's literally nightmares every night. And every time she'd hold on to the crucifix and then go to sleep, the nightmares disappear. The devils know that you're taking a step and they've got to come at you. They've got to make sure you go back and be their friend. So he says, I will sit there waiting like a roadblock 
on your straight path. And, but then how is he convincing us to turn away? In these few minutes that I have left, I want to give you a picture of what's coming in the, in, in the next khutbahs. He says to Allah, ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ He says, I will attack them from four directions. I will attack them from the front. I will attack them from behind. I will attack them from the right. And I will attack them from the left. From the front, from behind, from the right, and from the left. Now, that could just mean I'm going to attack him for all sides. But Allah's words are very precise. Allah's words are very precise. Each one of these is a strategy of the devil. He has a different kind of attack from the front. A different kind of attack from the right. A different kind of attack from the left. A different kind of attack from behind. And so we're going to take our time going through each of these attacks. But before we get into those attacks, I'll just tell you one goal that he has. Each of these attacks, how does he know that his attacks are successful? That's the goal, at least today, that's what I want to inform you of. How will he know that his attack was, has succeeded? وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ You will find, you will not find that most of them are grateful. If he can attack you, and by the end of that attack, you are no longer grateful to Allah. You're no longer grateful. You're pessimistic, and when someone's pessimistic, for example, they're not grateful, because to be grateful, you have to think about the good things. You can't think about bad things and be grateful, that's impossible. You can't say, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> that's not Alhamdulillah. You have to think of the positive. You, th you have to think of Allah's favors. You can't be grateful if you're in disobedience. How can you be grateful to Allah and show no loyalty to Him? How, what kind of gratitude is that? If He can figure out some way of making you and me ungrateful, then He succeeded. You know what we're learning? His biggest problem was arrogance. His biggest problem was arrogance. And Allah is teaching us through these ayat that the biggest solution to arrogance is what? Being grateful. Being grateful. And He knows, so long as they're grateful, I won't get them. So long as they're thinking about my favors to them, Allah's favors to them, I won't get them. So long as they're positive and hopeful, I won't get them. So long as they have a good opinion of Allah, I won't get them. Because obviously we can't be grateful to Allah if we're angry with Allah. You can't be thankful to Him if you have bad thoughts about Him. So if I can just get rid of their gratitude, I've succeeded. And He will try to get rid of it from the front, from the right, from the left, and from the back. And these are the attacks that inshallah ta'ala we're going to try to explore in some detail. What does it mean that the devil is coming at you from the front? What does it mean that he's coming at you from behind? What does it mean that he's coming at you from the right and from the left? And inshallah ta'ala, as we study that, you become, you have to ask yourself, maybe for you, the attack from the front is your problem. Maybe for your friend, the attack from the left is the problem. Maybe for another friend, the attack from behind is the problem. He won't get all of us the same way. He'll see, oh, this one didn't work, I'm gonna try this side. Oh, that didn't work, I'm gonna try the other side. Oh, that didn't work, ah, oh, this one got him. Okay, I'll stick with this one. I'll keep hammering him this way, you understand? This is why we have to study how is it that shaitan is going to ruin our journey along the straight path. May Allah Azza wa Jal keep us firm and committed to the straight path. Understand something now when you recite the Fatiha as I leave you, when you recite the Fatiha and you and I say, Sirat al an'amta alayhim, the path of those you made ease for. One of the meanings of in'am is to make things easy. Taysir, in'am is also taysir, nu'umma means softness. Allah is the only one. You know, they translate the path of those you blessed. Blessing is, ni'ma is part of the meaning. Nu'uma is also part of the meaning. Actually, the path of those, only you could have made the path easy for them. Because without you, the devil will make sure the path is hard, is impossible. So when we ask Allah, we don't just ask the path of good people. No, the path of those who you intervened and you made things easy for them without, without you making things easy and smooth for them, there is no way this road was going to be smooth because until the Day of Judgment, Shaitan is on that road. Shaitan and his minions are on that road waiting for you to, you to be attacked. How can a road be easy when you're going to be attacked from every direction? Only when Allah will make that road easy. Only when you will be from those and I will be from those who he describes in the Fatiha, الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ It gives you a new appreciation of what you say when you stand in the prayer and you say, Sirat الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ May Allah Azza wa Jal keep us committed to that path and accept our worship and save us from the whispers of the devil. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.